Namaste everyone. Thank you for joining us this evening for another session of Indica Yoga Yoga Insights. So this evening, our guest is Swami Taponidhi ji. And Swami Taponidhi is a Pari Brajak Sanyasin who is freely spreading the message of yoga and with his vast teaching experience, intuitively simplifies the subtle and powerful techniques of yoga so as to enhance relaxation and awareness, thereby allowing participants to choose appropriately while facing the events of life and thus improve the quality of their lives. Swami Taponidhi ji, after 15 years living under the guidance of his guru at the Bihar School of Yoga, is currently propagating and promoting the traditional goal of yoga. And during our talk today, Swamiji will talk about the following concepts in detail for an in-depth understanding. Darshan, yoga, yoga darshan, evolution and chakra sadhana. So can I welcome Swami Taponidhi to please join us? Swamiji? Namaste, Namaste Swamiji. Namaste Haryam Sophia ji. Thank you very much for inviting me over here for this session. Thank you Vinay Chandra ji and Indika Yoga and the entire team for taking care and guiding me into this entire process. Thank you so much for joining us Swamiji and I'll hand over the session to you now. Thank you so much. I'll see you towards the end. Thank you everyone. Haryom Tatsat. Haryom Tatsat. Haryom Tatsat. Before we begin, three ohms followed by a memory of the Guru. Guru Brahma, Guru Vishnu. Please settle yourself comfortably. Hands and elbows relaxed, shoulders relaxed. The spine, neck and head standing tall and straight. With eyes softly and gently closed. Become aware of your breath, the natural spontaneous breath. And shift the focus of your attention to the eyebrow center. On the eyebrow center, imagine or visualize A spot of light, steady and bright. While maintaining the attention on this spot, to chant the mantra Om with me three times, inhale. Om. Externalize your attention, become aware of the environment, open your eyes and get and I get ready to begin. Yes. Haryom Tatsat. A fortnight back, I was conducting a session on Pranayam. At the end of the session, 
a young boy, a young lad of 19, he raised a question, Swamiji, do we practice pranayam and yoga together? I was baffled. Yes. And then I had to ask him, what does he understand by yoga? And he said that, yes, it is asanas. So word over today, the understanding of yoga is asanas. Restricted and limited to asanas. On Facebook, on Instagram, in teacher training courses, the vision of the rishis of yoga has no place in the teachings today. And that is what made me select this subject and bring out this matter of yoga darshan. So I'm going to share some slides and we begin from there. So yoga darshan, the path, transformation and evolution. The concept, the understanding. What does darshan stand for? The word yoga mean? What does yoga darshan mean? We'll, I'll take you through this and it'll be a very simplified form. So please, it'll be in a language in which you and me can understand. Coming to the word darshan, it is from the root word Sanskrit to perceive. To perceive is to know, to experience. And you will tell me, Swamiji, I'm able to see through my eyes, I'm able to hear through my ears. There is an ability to taste through the tongue. I'm able to walk around with my limbs, smell through the nose. I'm able to perceive when my attention is on one of the senses. So it is the senses in the mind which define our perception. What happens if there are no senses, if one is deaf, is hearing possible? If one is blind, is seeing possible? If the attentive faculty is wandering, Eyes may be glued to an object, but is perception possible when the attentive faculty is wandering? The perception per se is confined at present for all of us to the capacity of the senses. The mind is not independent, it is dependent. It is dependent on the senses for perception. This is what is known as the gross mind. Sankhya classifies the mind as thula, sukshma, karana, sharir. The gross, the subtle, the causal, and going beyond to the Turiya state. Modern psychology considers it as conscious mind, subconscious mind, and the unconscious mind. The mind is having various dimensions, from gross to subtle, subtle to causal, causal to beyond, the Turiya Avastha. It has various ranges of perception. 
our gross perception, our normal perception, is manifestation of just one range of the mind. The ability to perceive that we have today, the question is, can it be independent of the senses? Perception, when we are all able to perceive, and they have brought out a whole book of yoga darshan, I mean, there might be something behind it. So let us look at it. Can it be independent of the senses? Can it be beyond sensorial experiences? Can the mind see without the eyes, taste without the tongue, hear without the senses, smell without the nose, move or travel without the limbs? There is another aspect of the mind of perception of an experience which I would like to share with you. Presently it's the rainy season. There are rain clouds in the sky. The mind perceives the clouds. And I say, and we say, that it is going to rain. Now there are people who have developed their intuitive faculty, which tells you, a developed intuitive faculty tells you it's going to rain. This is without any basis, without any evidence. There is no hypothesis. This is access to intuitive faculty, to intuitive knowledge, to knowledge which is independent of the senses. This is knowledge which is beyond the mind. I want to bring you closer to the vision of the rishis, of the concept of darshan. I said darshan from the word root word drish to perceive. I'm just adding to it. To perceive beyond the mind. To perceive beyond the senses. To be able to access knowledge. You see, when you perceive something, it becomes knowledge. It's going to rain. It's an intuitive knowledge. You are accessing intuitive knowledge to access universal knowledge. Now these darshanas, now this is the vision of the rishis that one should be able to access intuitive knowledge, universal knowledge. Now we all know that there are six darshanas. They are the smritis which have come from the Shruti, the Vedas. The six astic darshans which believe in the authority of the Vedas. I'm not going to go into the detail of it, but just a few words about the word Veda. Ved, knowledge, storehouse of knowledge, Ale. It's a storehouse of revealed knowledge. It's a Shruti. Shruti is that which is heard, that which is perceived while in a meditative state. So the Vedas are revealed knowledge. So the Darshanas are concerned with knowledge through the six different systems. Naya Darshan, Vaishik Darshan, they are complementary to each other. Sankhya Darshan, Yoga Darshan, Mimamsa and Vedanta. We are concerned with Yoga Darshan. And this is what we come to 
योग दर्शन द वर्ड योग बिफोर आई एक्सप्लेन द वर्ड योग आई वॉन्ट टू गिव एन एग्जाम्पल अ यंग बॉय फ्लाइंग अ काइट विद इज फादर ऑन द बीच the child asks his father how does the kite fly high the father in turn asks the child what do you think how does the kite fly high the child after thinking a bit says it is because of the wind the father snaps the string and then ask the son is the wind there what is it that makes the kite fly high where is the kite now the wind is still there the kite's gone with the wind either on a tree or in a river or on a railway track or on a terrace somewhere there is no direction to it the flying of the kite high is our life what is guiding our life is our thoughts thoughts are the springboard of our actions and behavior in life if i want a glass of water then my hand goes to the jug fill up the glass and take a glass of water what makes me act is a thought inherent in a thought is an emotion a feeling inherent in a thought is my like and dislike something is given to me i don't like it i don't accept it i go away from it inherent in a thought is my attitude i hate that person i love that person it's an internal attitude is an idea a concept a belief which i have cultivated and developed that is where we come to understand the word atha yoga anushasanam this is how rishi patanjali in yoga darshan or patanjali yog sutras starts with atha yoga anushasanam i have broken the word anushasanam anu individual consciousness that which is subtle it has got three states we have already to- spoken of it conscious subconscious and unconscious individual consciousness atma soul other names for it it is limited it wanders in the region of buddhi ahankar manas and the five tanmatras sapta sparsha roopa rasa gandha sound shabda touch ability to perceive sight taste and smell our attention wanders around these senses the five gyanendriyas and the five karmendriyas and this is individual consciousness limited and that is the mind once we have understood this we come to the word sasanam it's a very interesting word sasanam sa astra it's a tool with a tool sa astra and shastra a science a science a tool which is scientific in nature at one level it means to be able to guide 
I'm driving a car. There's a pothole right in front of me. Will I drive straight or will I maneuver myself? I'm guiding the car. What is guiding my life? What is guiding my expression and behavior? The thoughts which come up to the surface of the mind is what is guiding my life. And that thought, so the word sashanam over here means to be able to guide. Do I know my thought to be able to guide? So in the very first statement that he is making, now through yoga, through yoga, the ability to guide. So what is this yoga now? Through yoga. If I want to have, I'm giving a practical definition of yoga. How to practice it in daily life. How to practice it while you're doing the practices. The key aspect is, to be able to guide my thought, I need to know my thought. Do I know my thought? My attention is wandering in the world of senses, sensorial objects, hither and thither. It is the wind of the kite. Because I am able to control, the kite flies high. My life is going higher and higher and straight forward. Because I am able to guide it. Thoughts are still coming in. You are guiding your thoughts, your mind, Anushasanam. This is the key aspect of it, the purpose of yoga. So you are guiding your attention to know your thoughts, to know your thoughts, that mind, that attention, which is wandering in the world of senses, has to be brought back to look at the mind itself and the thoughts which come up and emerge from within. Whether to act or not is the next step of it. But to know the thought, once you start looking at the thought, it can be appropriate, it can be inappropriate. It spontaneously takes you to the state where the thought becomes calm. And what happens is, that you are able to become an observer of it. So where do the thoughts come from? There is a seed. The seed sprouts. And there is an expression. A tree grows, flowers, it flowers. So karmas and samskaras they form the seed. The karmas, they give you the events of life. We have to live them. Samskaras is how I will behave given the particular event. Will that event bother me? Will I sail through comfortably? So what comes up? To the surface of the mind known as a pratyaya they are the same things basically but it is coming up from within so we are at present conditioned by our thinking the thoughts which emerge our expression and behavior is not chosen it is a past experience karmas samskaras past experiences impressions in the field of consciousness, subconscious and unconscious. They come up as pratyayas and we express ourselves. That is why I said thoughts are the springboard of your action and behavior. Take care of your thoughts. The attentive faculty redirected to look at the mind.
meditative awareness of the thoughts which come, come up to the surface of your mind. This allows you to choose. This allows you not only to choose. Take a pause. Allow yourself. Know the feeling, the emotion. You come to know what is in the field of your consciousness. And this is exactly what is stated in the Bhagavad Gita at the end of every chapter. Om Tat Saditi Srimad Bhagavad Gita Su Upanishad Su Brahma Vidyayam Yoga Shastra Brahma Vidya Brahma Consciousness Vidyayam to attain knowledge of consciousness through the art and science of yoga through the art and science of meditative awareness of that which comes up from the seed as a pratyaya, as a thought, as an image. It requires the attentive faculty to be redirected. And those thoughts, they calm down. Yoga, chitta, vritti, nirodha. When you start looking at your thoughts, the thoughts settle down. You start thinking, ruminating. If you allow yourself, you are identifying with the knowledge which has come up as a thought, you know it. Are you involving into it? This is the key point. If you are involving in the thoughts without even being conscious of it, you have not chosen it. It is the fourth sutra. Vritti sarupyam iti ratra. Thoughts are vrittis. They are waves on the mind. They are not the mind, they are the waves on the mind. They have come up. They are not the ocean. They are the waves. And we behave according to the waves. Vritti, sarupyam, etiratra. But when you become silent, do not follow the thoughts. Do not involve yourself in the thoughts. Then you are with a witness as an observer. So as a non-observer, you are following the vrittis, the thoughts which come up. Whatever thoughts come up, you are walking in a mall. You don't need to have samosas. You have samosas. You don't need so many dresses. You buy another dress. It's just something which has come up. I want that dress. I like it. Your likes and dislikes are guiding you. It is totally unconscious. That is the non-observer station status of what is happening in our life. The moment you become an observer, oh, I don't need a samosa, I just had lunch. Please understand, it's perfectly fine to have a samosa. There is nothing wrong with it. It's just that the time is not proper. If you need it, you're hungry. Please have it. By all means, a conscious choice. This is where Yoga Darshan takes you. When you become an observer, a witness, you are not an involver, but you are a witness of it. You start choosing. When you start choosing, you start becoming aware of inner sounds, inner answers which come up within from within you. Knowledge which has got no basis. And this is what Yoga Darshan is talking of perception. A perce Yoga Darshan, process of perceiving through yoga, beyond the mind. To perceive the invisible. I once again define practically the word yoga. 
to be able to redirect the wandering attention again and again to look at one's own thoughts, one's own mind, become an observer. Knowing the thoughts which emerge, choosing involvement. And there we begin yoga darshan, the process of perceiving through yoga beyond the mind, perceiving beyond the senses, perceiving beyond the mind. The senses are the same, but the attentive faculty is internalized. In effect, the senses are closed. The mind is under control. It is no more guiding you. You are guiding the mind. You are choosing the thought. So yoga darshan means to perceive the invisible with spiritual insight. Internalized awareness. Spiritual, internalized awareness. External, gross, material awareness, gross awareness. So what you are getting is accessing knowledge which is intuitive in nature, which comes up from within you. So yoga darshan is demanding internalizing the awareness faculty, attentive faculty within and cultivating awareness, cultivating awareness of what comes up from within. To be aware is to know, to know the thought, to know what it means. Does it mean involving in the, into the thought? This is where you start choosing and acting. So yoga darshan through yogic practices is concerned with developing inner awareness right up to the stage of concentration, dharana. So that meditation, dhyana can happen. Yoga darshan is a systematic scientific path. It indicates the pitfalls, the milestones. Like I said, Atha Yoga Anushasanam. When you start witnessing your thoughts, meditative awareness, what happens? They calm down. Chitta, Vritti, Nirodha. It is a result of the practice of yoga, of looking at your thoughts, the discipline of guiding your thoughts. The result of that is you become a witness and an observer of what is within your consciousness, individual consciousness. If you are not an observer, you go to the next state. So it is a milestones. These are all milestones. Vritti, Sarupyam, Itiratra. So it takes this journey, this entire journey is from mundane levels of awareness. The path of progression is from mundane levels of awareness towards eventual liberation from the constraints of the mind. The mind is limited. It is limited interactive consciousness. Please do not kill the mind. Never. The mind is interactive. It allows you to participate in the world. To understand the mind, it is necessary. So yoga darshan takes us through practical methods, through the limbs of yoga, for cultivating inner awareness, to be able to get intuitive knowledge, oh, it's going to rain without any, any symptom, any signal. Just have a thought coming from within. That is an inner potential, a different state of mind. Cultivating an understanding of deeper aspects. 
what is within us, what is guiding us. We come to know ourselves better and better. There is good and bad. Everything is within us. A rose grows. Thorns are also there. Gaining access to intu intuitive knowledge. Gaining the ability to access universal knowledge. So we have to understand this that a sustained practice of yoga, yogic awareness, the journey is from mundane levels of consciousness, material consciousness, towards eventual liberation from the constraints of the mind. We are able to know the universal laws of nature. I told you, Vedas are Shrutis, revealed knowledge. Knowledge of what? their knowledge of the forces of the universe which have created this universe of how they interact in the external dimension macrocosm it is those so same elements which work within us gods are just an embodiment of that energy they have given them a form embodiment of the form hanuman is prana rama is consciousness sita is energy yeah, so on and so forth. This is what I'm trying to say. That you are managing the energy. So through yoga, Atha Yoga Anusashanam, you're guiding your mind, your thoughts, your mind, your life. And Yoga Darshan is the map for it. I want to go from here to uh, say Ritambara retreat. Yeah, JPS, the map. The yoga darshan is a map for our life. The journey of yoga. Yes. Explaining practical methods of cultivating inner awareness, exploring inner potentials, cultivating understanding of deeper aspects of ourselves in the field of consciousness. So many things are there. Ability to gain intuitive knowledge and accessing universal knowledge. This is where we come to the understanding of the word evolution. What does evolution mean? Mundane knowledge, individual consciousness, with karmas and samskaras. Karmas prarabdha cannot be changed. Samskaras how you will behave in a different situation, in a particular situation, can be addressed to have to evolve from one state to the other. It will demand a different nature, a different vision, a different mentality is necessary. Let us look at a very simple thing. Everything is made of an atom, a cell, atom. Do we perceive the atom? The structure within the atom, the electrons, the protons, the neutrons, do we deny their existence? This atomic structure which is the base and the foundation. They have a certain functional quality. There is a subtle play of energy and consciousness. A subtle inherent intelligence within to experience a different nature, a different mentality. The inherent which is there, which is invisible, to be able to perceive that knowledge, the intelligence within, requires an appropriate vision. So for us, evolution means the perception changes. The senses remain the same. There is no change in the senses. But the quality 
changes. Because over here, they are very powerful, the senses, believe you me. If I tell you that, yeah, today evening I'm going to get samosas, and I'm going to get chill lassi with that, and with badam and pesta, and a little bit of saffron. Oh, yeah, some of you will say, Swamiji, where are you? I'm joining you for the treat. Water in the mouth. Very powerful. Even just my saying so might bring water into the mouth. So one lets go of the powerful senses and their impressions, which come from within. And one allows. So evolution means letting go of the powerful senses and allowing the unbidden to arise from within, resulting in the manifestation of the inherent within you. What is the purpose of evolution? To expand the capacities of perception. To be able to perceive, not a focus, wide angle. Have a broader perspective of life, beyond and independent of the senses in the mind. To be able to perceive darshan beyond sense experience. This is the key point. Our evolution, look, we can live with the same mind, a conditioned mind, known as the tamasic mind. We always behave, given a brinjal vegetable, I would say I don't like it, I don't want to have it and keep continuing all throughout my life with the same mind. Whether I go on a holiday, I choose the same things, whether a different thing is available or not. I'm conditioned, tamasic state of mind. You may have rich monies, but you're not evolving. Your mind is not evolving. When you practice asanas, it is only the physical body which evolves. The mental body, the intelligence does not the emotions, we are driven away by emotions, carried away. They carry us away to a different world altogether. And this is where we have to come to understand the process of evolution. Please understand one thing, that the evolution happens, the manifestation has happened when Purusha and Prakriti, Shiva and Shakti are together, Buddhi, Ahankar, Manas with the Jnanendriyas and the Kanvendriyas, Rajas activity, Tamas, the conditionings, the sensorial impression, Tanmatras, and the Pancha Mahabhutas, the five great elements. Descending into this body, The energy, whether consciousness or manifest energy, prana shakti or chitta shakti, either of them is prana. That mahaprana has come down into the body, ida and pingala, crossing over at different junctions. Settling down as kundalini, as energy. Consciousness settling down as energy at Kundalini. So the process of evolution is the awareness of the interplay of energy and consciousness at the level of the chakras. So prana coming down to the punch pranas, the five vayus, which activate and energize the body, the gross physiological body, though they are subtle in nature. Ida and Pingala, they are nadis. What flows within them is nada, vibrations, prana. What flows within them is prana. 
each having its own different properties. There is an electricity line going. There are two switches. One switch switches on the fan, the mechanical energy. The other switch will switch on the light, electrical energy giving light. Prana flowing through Ida, force of desire, force of consciousness, Chitta Shakti, through Pingala, force of manifestation, that energy which will manifest. And it goes through the chakras. The energy going through the chakras, distributing throughout the body. So the process of evolution for us, when this energy and consciousness get limited, when the consciousness mind gets stuck in one thought, the energy goes around and round that thought only. One has to be aware, this is a block. This block, on the path of yoga sadhana, this invariably happens. We get blocked and locked into a particular thought, an idea, a concept, which is coming from within and that event skips repeatedly coming again and again and again till we transcend it through awareness we do not allow it to bother us that not bothering us is the transcendence so process of evolution is the evolution of consciousness awareness of interplay of energy and consciousness at chakras becomes a key point here i would like to give an example a highway with by lanes signals on the way one signal there is a traffic block the by lanes are blocked the entire highway gets blocked Please understand, all the by lanes, the Ida and the Pingala, throughout the body, they have to be free for flow of energy. This will start at the level of the chakra. So first part on the journey of evolution is clearing the Ida and Pingala. Then we come to the chakras which become the center of consciousness, center of energy. Up and down, both ways. That has to be stimulated, purified, awakened. When that awakens, the energy flow through the sushumna is clear. The highway becomes clear. Once the highway becomes clear, the energy rises. If you have not cultivated strength through the physical body, then it will trouble you. So the process of in evolution demands awareness of the interplay of energy and consciousness at the level of the chakras. As we internalize the awareness with the practices of Pratyahara and Dharana, we experience the interplay of energy and consciousness. And it is through this interplay, there is an evolving awareness of the chakras and the evolving awareness of the tattvas. So here perception means the ability to observe at different centers, at chakras, internalize awareness, the state of the energy, the state of consciousness. Each center, each chakra represents a different quality, a particular nature. The mind, the attentive faculty as it fuses with the energy and consciousness at that particular chakra, one gains the ability to dive deeper within, delve deeper within. 
I'll starting with say Mooladhar and at Mooladhar the energy emerges goes to altered states of consciousness ultimately going to a luminative state of consciousness in space and that brings us to chakra satna a scientific scientific system to release confined energy and consciousness from the chakras i already explained free flowing energy through the sushumna the chakra is a bindu nada eda flow of consciousness kala flow of manifest energy energy which will manifest prana shakti when these two join opposite currents when hot and cold join there is steam energy releases the potential releases purification happens to purify a rod an iron rod to make it malleable we put it in steam first heat up in a furnace and when it is red hot we remove it out and plunge it into water and then start hammering it tempering it what does it mean only one thing the rust gives way purification happens as within so without external laws same applicable within us so the practice of yoga has to bring this about free flow of energy through the sushumna purification happens the sushumna will flow freely so as a practice bringing the two opposite polarities ida nada shakti chitta shakti flow of consciousness and pingala kala prana shakti flow of energy for manifestation when they meet at the chakras the bindu the potential of energy and consciousness within it will explode it is then that one can evolve through the chakras and ultimately experience a state of consciousness which is beyond the impressions klesha karma vipaka ashaya it is beyond all that it contained in the field of consciousness kleshas our likes and dislikes karmas our impressions the effect of the karmas beyond that also vipaka ashaya the storehouse which is there it is beyond the storehouse we can experience pure consciousness this is what is the key so why chakra sadhana we come to that so we are releasing the conditioned blockages we are releasing the conditioned blockages when ida and pingala meet at the different centers the conditioned behavior which is there embedded within it that is released you are free of it that is the meaning of purification it no more guides your life you are grounded physically mentally emotionally physically with the body mentally with the intelligence the intellect emotionally the emotions don't carry you away you go to desires for fulfillment of desires you don't have to overpower anybody it is 
you gain the ability to consciously manifest your desires without having to be overpowering. Knowing the emotions rather than being, oh, being overwhelmed by them and getting carried away by them. Going to a sulk or becoming overexcited. You gain the ability to express your own knowledge. The interactions in life, they improve. Your expressions of life, they change. The interactions, you become a listener. You become quiet. The ability to listen as well as to express undergoes a drastic change. You come to a state where you are able to access intuitive knowledge. When you start, you know, sometimes intuitive knowledge can tell you that knowledge which is beyond the senses can tell you something which your intellect might say, no, I don't want to listen to you. That is when inner strength is necessary. Atmabal, inner strength, to be able to, you might be ready to face a loss. And what will happen is, after six months, you have faced a loss at this point of time. But after six months, you will find, thank God, I gave him the money and got rid of it. I didn't want to enter into all these problems later on. Intuitive knowledge is your friend, is the source, is from Atma, your friend. You will have to make him a friend, you will have to listen. It is only then that you can access universal energies. To access universal energies, access knowledge. And not just knowledge, the ability to perform, to express that knowledge. The connection with the universal knowledge and, cons and consciousness is the keystone. You will come to a state of peace without pretense. As an expression of your daily life, as one's daily life. And this will form the chakra sadhana, going through the seven stages, the seven chakras going through the six chakras, the seventh one is a result of it, provided you maintain the state of your consciousness. So yoga, in brief, the path, the way to evolution is a race. It's an acronym where the first A stands for attention, you are cultivating, you are directing, redirecting your attention. The moment you start redirecting your attention and start looking at your own thoughts, there is a pause in the vibrations of the thoughts. They become calm and still. The dissipation of the mind, the wandering attention of the mind comes down. taking you to a state of relaxation. If you become an observer at, at that point of time, if you do not involve yourself, you are a witness, but you start choosing, you are aware, and it can take you to cultivation of awareness and accessing inner knowledge. But that is when the ability to concentrate will manifest, start manifesting itself. The diversions will be still there. It is when concentration happens, one must understand there is a lens, a ray of light, sun's rays going through the lens, convex lens, meet at a focus. You place a piece of paper at the focus, 
powerful rays. It gets the concentration, gets the power. It starts burning the paper. Laser beam is today used for eye therapy, for burning, for removing the stones within. A powerful energy. That goes in for evolution then. That is when your consciousness evolves. So you have to concentrate on the chakras. You have to reverse the energies. You have to use the tools for chakras of reversal of energies, the bandhas, the mudras. You have to stimulate the chakras, the mantras. Attention over there. How to bring the attention over there? For evolution. Through for evolution. Journey, yogic journey. Through a race. Haryom Tatsat. Haryom Tatsat. Haryom Tatsat. I would like to end the session over here. Yoga Darshan, the path, a race, transformation and evolution. Transformation of your thoughts, choosing your thoughts, you transform yourself. Concept and understanding of whatever is mentioned, Darshan, Yoga, Yoga Darshan, evolution and Chakra Sadhana. I have tried to explain in very simple terms. And now I would like to request Sophia, please take over. If there are any questions and answers, questions to be placed on me, I am ready for it. Haryom Tatsat. Om Tatsat Swamiji, thank you so much for that beautiful in-depth explanation. There's so many topics that you've covered in such simple terms. I'm sure all of our participants um, have enjoyed this session. And before we get into the questions from our participants, and also we got a lot of remarks, everyone saying thank you for this session, and the session was really appreciated. Thank you, everyone. If you really appreciated this session, uh, what's interesting is we have a retreat, a residential retreat that Swamiji himself will be conducting. So Swamiji, based on today's uh, talk that you've given, can you also tell us what we can expect at this retreat? Because that is also about chakra sadhana that is going to be conducted at the Ritambara space in Bangalore. Yeah, it starts coming Friday uh, on the 17th. In the evening we gather. And uh, I will be taking straight in the evening session itself at least to give an experience of two chakras through yogic practices. It will definitely benefit from those who are practitioners of yoga and who want to delve deeper into yoga for evolution. The second day also and the tools that will be used will be mantras, there will be mudras, there will be nada. I am carrying the singing bowls and the nada equipment with me. And it is an introductory retreat. Normally I conduct this retreat for six days, seven days. And it is totally encapsulated. So it will include practices which will give you the idea of how to locate the chakras, stimulate them, awaken them, feel the energies. It will be an introductory session. Friday, Saturday the whole day and Sunday evening we go back with definitely an experience at least I promise two chakras <laughs> because it's too short a time to finish everything. Yeah, I would rather focus and give experience on two at least and give the guidelines on the others also. Yes, definitely. And I'll be open to question and answer sessions also over there. Thank you so much for that uh, explanation, Swamiji. So anyone, this is a great opportunity for you to register for the residential retreat that Swamiji will be uh, conducting at the Ritambara Center. All the details for the retreat can be found on our website. 
Um, so let's start with questions from our participants this evening. We have uh, Shefali ji who's asking the meaning of Sushumna. Nadi. Simple. Nadi. Nadi is a pathway through which energy will flow. Nada. Nada is a vibration. Okay, let me explain a little bit further. Ida, Pingala and Sushumna. In the subtle body, what flows within them is Nada. They are the Nadis. So Prana, let us explain the term Prana. Pra plus Na. Pra is to explain pra, I will take the help of two words. Precede. P R E C E D E. Pre. It is a substrate. It is existing before. That is what pre implies. Proceed. P R O C W E D. Pro. So that which is eternal is pra. What is eternal? Na. To explain na, I will use the term nada to make it very understandable. I have a percussion instrument, a drum. I strike on it. That is the the. And the na is vibrations are set up, oscillations are set up, and they travel. That is na. So prana is eternal vibrations, eternal, and with the properties of that which flows through ida, the force of consciousness, prana, which flows as nada, vibrations. We don't perceive the nada. We cannot feel them, and that is why we are not able to hear. So prana, as nada, which flows in the ida, is the force of consciousness, the force of desire. It has one property, sarvagyata, all knowledge. Shiva, all knowledge, sarvagya. And pingala. Sarva Kartritma Bhav, ability to perform. So that which flows in the Nadi is the Nada. So path of energy and Sushumna is one of them, the central path. Yes. Anybody else? Thank you. Yes. Um, Ashok Kumarji is saying, thank you for the intro session. How to practice? Are there any centers in Karnataka? Uh, sorry, I am uh, here in Bangalore and I will be conducting this session over a three-day period with Indica Yoga. And if Indica Yoga wishes I am ready to come and teach, I am ready to practice with everybody for a period of at least one week so that everybody can be indoctrinated or ingrained or initiated into the sadhana of chakra. So I leave it to you, Sophia, and Indica Yoga. <laughs> I don't have a center with me. <laughs> yoga, Indica Yoga welcomes you with open arms. Of course, I think it's a fantastic idea. And I'm sure all of our participants, if you're listening to this, even B. Ramji has said, how can we get started with the practice? You can get started with the practice in a few days if you come for the retreat that Swamiji is hosting because the retreat is also about Chakra Sadhana. And the details for this, we'll be putting up the poster a little later. So I'll share the details with everyone watching this today. Thank you so much. And thank you so much for your kind words, Swamiji. Um, we'll take a few more questions, uh, just maybe two more questions. I'm, 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 I'm free. Please go ahead. If you are OK, okay. I'm OK. I'm OK. okay. <laughs> Shoot, um, I'm ready. Okay. Hands up. <laughs> Also, someone asked if uh, this session will be available yet, uh, later. So, yes, all of our sessions are recorded and will be available on the Indica Yoga website as well as our YouTube channel. 
So great. Since Swamiji has time, let's let's see how many questions we can get through. So Swamiji, Anjan Nandiji is asking, how can we extract the past if that past action is evaluated through the yoga darshan? Hmm. The path of transcendence is the path of becoming aware. The moment you become aware, you know that it is guiding your life. It requires stillness. To be aware is to be still. In the silence, in that, pos in that state when you're allowing yourself to be an observer status, drashta, the witness who is aware of it, but who is not involving. Knowing that this is directing my life. And then you start choosing differently how your actions and behavior affect. This is how I will explain now. Say you are choosing not to smoke. You have a cup of tea. The next desire that comes up is, let me have a smoke. You decide, oh, let me smoke today. Tomorrow we will see about not smoking. Now you are, your inner being is telling you that you have chosen not to smoke. Are you ready to listen to it? Your action and behavior becomes a fertilizer. Your action and behavior becomes rainwater. Your action and behavior becomes sunlight for that craving if you give in to that craving. Your action and behavior will become fertilizer, will become rainwater, will become sunlight if you have the inner strength to follow your inner voice. This is the path. I'm not saying it is easy. I, I, I never, never said that it is easy. <laughs> but this is the way. You become balanced and harmonious in your actions irrespective of the inner conditions guiding you. Yes. And the best person to guide you in this is your personality whom you believe in. The God, the Guru, the person, the personality whom you have full faith in. He can guide you in this. I hope this answers your question. Thank you, Swamiji, for that explanation. Anjan Nandi, uh, Nandiji, I hope that uh, explains it, as Swamiji also asked. Then Rakesh Kumarji is saying, Pranam Swamiji, he's very obliged to be in your presence. Amshe um, Faliji, whose question you answered earlier, says thank you for your detailed explanation. And we have just one more question. Madhuji is asking if this can be offered online. Uh, very difficult. I would rather not offer it online. Simple reason. If a wild thought comes to you and you give in to it, you will sink down in your life journey. It has to be a face to face sadhana, it cannot be given online. It has to be monitored. It is my eyes have to be open. It has to be known because I will be guiding, though it's a group session, I'll be guiding individually. Yeah. Thank you so much. So you can experience this in person, like I keep repeating at our Indica retreat that we're doing with Swamiji. Um, uh, uh, Ramji is saying, how can we increase the in our inner strength to have more discipline? Events of life, life is the book that you have to read. Take one small sankalp, a small affirmation. Today you are getting up at six. Just decide that you want to get up at 5.45, 15 minutes earlier and see what happens. Start small, don't, don't jump. Start small, 
Start training yourself. If you are successful, 15 days without fail, you get up without any hesitation and you are able to occupy yourself in those extra 15 minutes. Go back another 15 minutes. Go to 5.30 a.m. Go back another 15 minutes. 5.15 a.m. You will come to a point as my Guruji says, the habit only the I will remain ultimately. Everything is lost. Yes, you will be able to do it. Begin slow, begin small, sure-footed. Remember, you have to let go. As you climb up the rung of the ladder, if you don't let go of the lower ladder, you cannot balance on two feet on the upper rung. Let go and rise. Let go and rise. This is the key. You have to have patience, start small, and you will find through these daily activities, you're cultivating your mind. I was asked a question. Swamiji, what do you think about all these asanas which are happening, the way yoga is being treated? And I said, yes, fine. Look, people are cultivating their mind that I want to do asanas every day in the morning. A time will come when their experience will tell them that this is not enough, I want to delve deeper. It's not very far. The day is not very far. People have taken to yoga, it's become a household word. Thanks to the rishis and the gurus who have spread the knowledge all over the world. Yoga from door to door and shore to shore. That was the mission of Swami Satyananda. My Param Guru, my Dada Guru. Yes, guided by his, his Guru. My Param Guru, Swami Shivananda. And Swami Niranjanand is guiding the yogic moment now. With their blessings, this is how it is. Yeah. Thank you so much uh, for the, the, those techniques. They, they, they're so simple, but they do work. Thank you for sharing. So, Ramji, I hope that answers you. Uh, Madhuji wants to know if you're going to be going to America anytime soon. And that's our last question for the evening. Mm. I don't know. <laughs> I have been invited by my friend over there in New Jersey to stay with him. One of my friends, my schoolmates is in uh, Florida. He also invited me, but uh, I'm not able to commit myself at the moment. Yeah. So why not travel to India? Come to India. I invite you. <laughs> Uh, yeah, come to oh, India. It's God. a beautiful, beautiful place. Beautiful, nice people. Come to Indica Yoga. It's not just Chakra Sadhana. So many things Indica Yoga is doing. Yeah. There's a beautiful scent. Yeah, sorry. Go ahead. No, no, that, that. please continue. I was just <laughs> going to say, Madhuti, yeah, so there's your answer. You know, you could always come to India. Yeah. Um, anyway, thank you. Um, Bring a group to India. Don't come alone. Bring a group and we can practice together. Ask Indica how many people they can accommodate and we can be together for a week, for 10 days, 15 days, or a one month session also with mantra chanting, yes. Thank you so much and may it be, these are all auspicious things, I'm sure they'll come to me. Thank you to all our participants who joined us this evening. Uh, before we go, guys, just uh, to share a few announcements, of course, starting with Swamiji's own retreat that's going to be happening at the Ritambara Ashram. Can we have the poster up for that, please? So there we have it, the Chakra Sadhana Retreat. It's an experiential retreat which will be held on 15th and 17th July at the Indica Ritambara Retreat in Bangalore. Uh, for details, you can write to us at namaste at indicayoga.com. You can register also at indicayoga.com because all of the details and the registration form can be found on our website. Then we also have from the 1st to the 10th of August, the, okay, next week's Yoga Insights, uh, well, next Friday, we're going to be having a practical session by uh, Dr. Sujata Kaulagi, no, just Sujata Kaulagi, I'm sorry, she's a yoga teacher. And this uh, session is going to be focused on yoga for pregnant women. So I hope you all can join us for that session. It's a very important topic. 
And lastly, from the 1st to the 10th of August, we're also having Indica Yoga's first uh, yoga foundation course. So do we have the poster for that, please? I don't think uh, the post is available right now, but details for that also we can find on our website. It's a 10 day foundation course. Again, it's a residential course, which will be held at Ote Rigo at the Indica Ritambara Retreat in Bangalore. So I hope everyone can join us for that as well. Please find details for registration on our website. Thank you so much. Thank you, everyone. Uh, before we leave, if anyone would like to get in touch with you, Swamiji, how, I mean, is there an email address or a website you can share with us, please? Mm, I don't have a website. I'm too busy running around, traveling around <laughs> to look and take care of the website. Yeah. Uh, I'm uh, normally teaching at uh, Indica Yoga, you can get in touch with. I mean, I'm, I'm making it a norm, uh, straight away. Then uh, you can get in touch with me at uh, Ayana Yoga Bangalore and on Facebook and Instagram I am as Facebook I am as Swami Taponidhi Saraswati and on Instagram as Swami Taponidhi so you can connect with me I share my events over there I travel all over the world I travel to 2019 I travel to Korea Bangkok Thailand Nepal is a regular feature for me Pokhara this year I'm taking a break and thank you very much for inviting me for this wonderful session into Yoga Insights and that particular thing really excited me, the title itself, it is Yoga Insights and I thought it was the right time to bring out and introduce this concept of yoga, the vision of the rishis of how they are wanting you to evolve from within, otherwise you carry the same mind from life to life. You carry the same mind wherever you want. Yeah, doesn't matter. Doesn't make a difference. Thank you so much. And thank you so much to all our participants for your kind invitations and your kind comments. We're here for you. And these Yoga Insights sessions were uh, founded so that people participate and we can share our knowledge and wisdom with each other. And this was such a beautiful coming session. Thank you so much again, Swamiji, for being part of the Indica Yoga family. Thank you to all of our participants for joining us every week. And I hope to see all of you at our next session at 6 p.m. next Friday. Thank you so much. Dhanyavad. Have a ha beautiful day. Hari Om Dachat Sarva Mangal Mangalye Shive Sarvarth Sadhike Sharanye Trambake Gauri Narayani Namo Stute Narayani Namo Stute Narayani Namo Stute Hari Om Tatsat. Thank you very much. Thank you. Signing off over here.